This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. And you were asking me if Rosen hits and let's say he starts balling, the light goes on. That's the greatest thing that can happen to the Dolphins. Remember what I was just telling you that, okay, now we're going to get a couple of guys to, to, to compete at guard, guys that they've drafted the last two years. Well, somebody's going to lose the competition. But I know that there's going to be people that are going to look at it like a negative, and I'm not. The only way you look at it as a negative is if the guy can't play and it was a total bust. But if Dieter and, you know, Kinley are playing well, but Dieter barely beat Kinley or Kinley barely beat Dieter, but they're both doing a good job, then I'm happy, man, because now they got six, you know? And if Jesse Davis is playing well at right tackle and Hunt is starting, well, now we got seven. I start to feel better about this. And it becomes something of a positive because the more good players you have and the excess that you have of those players, they now become what, ladies and gentlemen? Trade bait. So if Josh Rosen goes out and balls, then you now... I can drive up the price. And instead of, I don't even know, did Josh Rosen really cost you a second rounder? I I don't know because you got one second rounder and turned it into two second rounders. How do we even, how do we even justify that? It's like a half a second rounder. So what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? So now you could turn him into a first rounder. Two second rounders. I don't know. I saw I saw Matt Schaub get traded for two second rounders years ago from Atlanta to Houston. You never know. So if you're a Dolphins fan, yeah, man, you are, you're rooting for Josh Rosen to succeed. You're rooting for Josh Rosen to ball. That doesn't create any problems. That creates a beautiful problem to have. That that's that's the kind of stuff that you want to be disturbed with, that Josh Rosen is bawling. That's freaking awesome. You know? So that that's where I would I would go with that one. Uh, David uh, Pridham says, Marino's lack of ring still stings with him. His yards and TD records have been shattered by lesser QBs due to the rule changes. Give the man his retired jersey number 13, uh, SOL level of immortality. I don't think they're taking it away. I don't think they're asking for it. Uh, this is something. It's not a subject, man. Uh, to, and Tua, Tua's not that guy. Tua's not going to want thirteen. You, you understand that, right? One of the things that you're going to like about Tua, I, I believe, from what I'm reading, the way I see him, I think he's his own man. I think he wants to go out and make his own mark. I, I think he wants to make his own number. So that way he makes it what it is. That 12 stands for Greasy and 13 stands for Marino. And whatever number he picks, he wants to make it his number, not somebody else's. So I think Tua will want to make his own mark. I I think we're making a big deal out of absolutely nothing. I don't think he's even thinking uh, of 13. I'll go with five. That'll be my guess. You know, you guys can give us your guess while you're uh, watching and listening, and you can do it on the on the accidentlawfirm.com text line. You can put it on the uh, on the text, ma- uh, text machine. Like DM Fins Up says, nine will be Big O. So he's going to go in nine. Uh, let's see. Two has great potential. Marino uh, was a great NFL QB with one of the best of all time. Like Parcells said, potential means you haven't done anything yet in the NFL. You are correct, sir. You are correct. But it's nice to have a quarterback that I know is accurate. (laughs) That's all, man. I I just like that the Dolphins drafted a guy. They don't have to really teach him the position. They just have to teach him the the, the game plan, teach him football at this level, defenses, you know, things like that game speed he has to adjust to, the normal things that every real player adjusts to. We don't have to teach him to throw a touch pass. 
or get pocket feel or any of that crap. That's what I like. They didn't take some project. They took a guy that's a winner, man. Big O, so regardless of the situation, Rosen's days as a Dolphins are numbered whether he balls or stays backup material. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. No doubt. Uh, Big O, do you know anything about our new O-line coach, Jim Marshall? Can you ask or tell if he's a good teacher for young players? I hope he is. Well, we all hope he is. I can't tell you if he is or not. We'll find out. Just like, you know, we didn't know about Flores. And now we feel a lot better about Flores. And I think in one more year, if Flores does well again, we're going to be convinced that that's the guy. So there you go. One, uh, Julius305 says, Greasy 12, Marino 13, Tua 14. You know what? I kind of like that. I like that actually more than five. Because there's like an order of the history of the quarterbacks. So, yeah, the next stud takes over, and you've got hopefully, a, you know, a stud Hall of Famer eventually. You know, he's a Hall of Fame individual. Uh, so, yeah, I, I like Julius 3. I'm, I'm, I'm with Julius 305 on this one. That's better than five. I like that. I like that a lot. I, you know, I, I never thought of it because you got Greasy 12 and then Marino 13, and then it just kind of follows through. That's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like it. Uh, Rosen can still win the starting job. It's all up to him. Yes. That I can tell you a thousand percent. Look, man, Rosen can't complain. He had an opportunity last year, and he could not get himself ready enough for it and could not compete on a consistent basis to keep the job and give the team the best chance to win. And when he couldn't do that, Flores did the responsible thing. He benched him. He had to bench him. You got you you lose the locker room if you're just playing a guy to develop him and you're hurting the rest of the team. And without that smart move by Flores, which by the way, my dumb ass wanted Rosen to stay there, but I didn't see the big picture the coach did. I was wrong, and he was right. You had to get Fitz back in there so you could develop Kasicki, so Devontae Parker can have the season he had, so Preston Williams can continue to play well, so your team had a chance to compete because when things broke down, Fitz found ways to make plays with his arm or his legs, things that Rosen was not ready to do. And so the coach, and that's the reason why he's there and I'm back here just running my mouth behind this mic, he was right. He saw the big picture. He said, you know, I can't assess I can't assess everybody. I don't know what they're doing, if they're good or bad, because my quarterback is not giving everybody else an opportunity to make plays. And Fitz gave everybody an opportunity to make plays. And if Rosen starts the entire year, by the end of the year, we say Parker's still a bust, Kasicki hasn't come through, you know, Uh, Who's this Preston Williams kid? Why'd they play him so much? He really didn't do much. You know what I'm saying? And and so by playing Fitz, we were like, wow, Parker is the the bomb. Hey, Gesicki, he's waking up. Hey, they found something in Preston Williams. You know what I'm saying? Even Isaiah Ford played better. I mean, we could just go on and on. So it was really smart on their part. But it's up to Rosen that the next time he's given an opportunity – you got to shine, man. You you got you got to show the people above you that you know you're you're worth this decision. That I'm going to be the difference maker. 